morning, Miss Chelsea. What in the world are you doing? Hey there, Troy. I was just over here trying to figure out how big this tree is. You know, like figuring out the circumference. Well, we've got tools and better techniques and ways to do that. <gasps> Can you show us some of those? Sure, let's get to measuring. Let's go. Hey there, I'm Chelsea York and I'm the Education Coordinator with the Georgia Forestry Commission. And I have my friend here today to help us out with our measurements. And I'm Troy Clymer, I'm the Georgia Forestry Commission Forest Management Chief. So have you ever taken the time to look closer at the trees in your yard or in your neighborhood? If you have, you may have noticed that none of them are the same in size, height, circumference, or even have the same types of leaves. Today, what we're gonna do is stop a moment and take a closer look at our trees. We're gonna learn how to measure them, the height and the circumference, using some of the tools that our foresters have, but also using tools that you have at home. So while actually hugging a tree can help us figure out the circumference, there's so many other tools and techniques that we can use to figure out the height and the circumference and diameter of our trees. But before we dive into more details on that, Troy, can you share with us a little bit about what you do as a forester? Uh, yes, ma'am. So as a forester, we work with landowners to help them figure out what their objectives are for their property. And so through those objectives, we provide recommendations to that landowner to help them achieve those objectives. And then a lot of our uh, recommendations that we make are to keep that forest healthy. And that provides for wildlife, soil and water uh, conservation, uh, providing recreation opportunities for the landowner. Through all that, it's also growing future timber products that we use every day in our everyday lives. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Oh, yes, ma'am. So while you're out there and everything, what kind of tools do you use to measure the trees? So some of the tools we use, uh, we use a clinometer, uh, and this helps us figure out the height of the trees uh, throughout the stands. And uh, then we also use uh, a logger's tape. And that logger's tape we use uh, to help us figure out the diameter of the tree. And through that, that helps us determine what the volume is uh, throughout that property uh, of that stand. And then through that, that also gives us an idea of how to keep that stand healthy and, and vibrant, and then uh, also helps us determine what kind of forest products they have on that stand. Those are so cool. Can you demonstrate how you use them? I sure can, let's go. Let's go. All right, so today, uh, we're going to measure this longleaf pine using some of the tools that foresters utilize every day in the woods. And then after that, Miss Chelsea's going to utilize some of the tools that you have at your house to make those same measurements. So we'll start off using our loggers tape. And so we'll start at the base of the tree and we'll measure up four and a half feet on the tree. And as we come up to four and a half feet, this is what we call a DBH or diameter at breast height. And so we come in and we take that diameter of the tree there. And this one, we're sitting at about 12 and a half inches. So once we get that measurement, uh, that gives us our diameter and that's, that's a straight line through the tree. Uh, circumference is what Ms. Chelsea's gonna show us and that's around the tree. So once we do that, we would go out and we'd get our height. So we get our clinometers out and we would plug into the tree with our loggers tape and we would walk out 66 feet and then we would measure, uh, we would take an angle at the base of the tree and that would give us a number and then we'd get a number from the top of the tree and then we would add those two numbers together and that would give us our total height. And so with these two numbers, we're able to take those measurements throughout a stand and then that will give us our volume of that stand. You can use these measurements and there's some tools on the internet. You can plug those numbers in and it can show you what a tree like this will save you in energy cost or stormwater runoff or how much carbon it's even taken in. You don't have to have the professional equipment like Troy here to measure trees around your yard or your neighborhood. All you need are a few simple items from around your house. Before we jump into taking measurements on our own, pause your video and go collect the following items. You will need to grab a ruler, a writing utensil, a piece of string, yarn, or soft measuring tape, uh, and a piece of paper. Depending on your math skills, you may also want to grab a calculator and a friend or parent to help you out too. Now that you've gathered all the materials that you're gonna need, you need to take a moment and figure out which tree you want to measure. For us, we're going to stick with our longleaf pine here. Now that you've picked out your tree, what I want you to do is take your pen and paper, take a nice long look at your tree, 
and just make an estimated guess of what you think the circumference is before we measure it and write it down. So Troy, can you write down what I think ours is? Sure. So now what you need to do is get your string and we're gonna take this and you wanna wrap it around the tree. Do you remember at what height we're supposed to measure the circumference of the tree? That's right, four and a half feet. So you wanna take your string and wrap it around the tree. And where your string or your yarn crosses and comes back together, you wanna to make sure that you mark it. There we go. And now you can unwrap it. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your string where you marked it, and you're gonna measure that with your ruler. There you go. And you'll wanna record how many inches you got for the length of your string. So now that you've measured and gotten your circumference, I want you to record that answer at the same place that you wrote down your guess. Was it close? What did you get? You could see my answers. My guess was 21 inches, but our measurement came out to be 41 and a quarter inches in circumference. Now the next part can get a little bit tricky, but don't worry. You'll need to grab your ruler and your friend. You or your friend will need to stand at the base of the tree. Whoever is not standing at the base of the tree, you will need to take the ruler and hold it vertically at arm's length like this with the inches side facing you. Keep your arm stiff and the ruler straight. Slowly walk backwards until the top and bottom of the ruler line up with the top and bottom of the tree. Once you have the tree lined up, make a note of where the top of your friend's head is on the ruler. The top of Troy's head is around two inches on our ruler. This is where math comes into play. We are going to take the number of our friend's height that we just found and divide the length of the ruler by that number. Our ruler is 12 inches and we measured Troy's height at the base of the tree at two inches. So 12 divided by two gives us a quotient of six inches. How tall is the friend that stood at the base of the tree? If you are unsure, you can measure using a measuring tape or estimate using your ruler. Troy is five foot 11 inches. So lay out your equation like this. Friend's height times your quotient equals the tree's height. So Troy was five foot 11, so it's five foot 11 times six equals 35 and a half feet. Nicely done. Now that you've gathered your measurements from your trees, what can we do with that data? So you can go online to the National Tree Benefit Calculator at the Arbor Day Foundation and utilize that tool to help you calculate those benefits. Thanks for sharing that with us, Troy. Let's go check it out. To find the National Tree Benefit Calculator by the Arbor Day Foundation, you can do a simple Google search or you can find it in our description. Once you reach the website, you will need to enter your zip code. So we were in 31020. From there, you'll need to know your tree species. We don't have time to cover that information here, but there are a few tools and resources to help you identify your tree. You can use apps like iNaturalist or the Virginia Tech Tree ID, or you can contact your local science teacher, ag teacher, or local FFA group. Once you know your tree species, then the only other thing you'll need to know is your tree diameter. And we measured that in the activity earlier. So for us, our tree type was a longleaf pine. So let's find that on our list. There we go. And our tree diameter that we measured earlier, if you remember, was 41 and a quarter inches. Uh, for this, you'll need to round that number to the nearest whole number. So we are gonna round ours down to 41 inches. And so what land use type was your tree nearest? Was it near your home, a multifamily resident, small commercial business, park or vacant lot? For us, we're gonna say small commercial business. Now, let's calculate our benefits. Whoa, our longleaf pine gives us 
approximately $203 worth of benefits every year. So what does that equate to? It will intercept 10,997 gallons of stormwater runoff this year. Plus, it will help us conserve 327 kilowatts an hour of electricity, and it will reduce our atmospheric carbon by 276 pounds. So really enjoyed being able to be with y'all today. I appreciate the invite and coming out and learning about measuring trees. Yeah, I appreciate you coming out and helping us out today. So if you guys want to learn more, you can visit and find more online at gatrees.org. Or you could check out our channel to find more activities and videos like this. And who knows, maybe one day we'll see you in the forest measuring trees with us. <laughs>